to you. Clearly, you're going to have to pay just a little bit more because you're lowering the value of the car while you're renting it, to say the least. So interest rates will immediately go up when the government starts overprinting money, which means that the government doesn't actually make that much. So the moment that the government takes over the currency, it has to almost immediately take over interest rates so that it can print its own money and then put a cap on interest rates so that other people uh, end up paying the bill down the road. So I, I can go into this in more detail if people should be interested by any chance. But I really wanted to point this out. Please send this video around to people who are confused about the free market. The only thing you really can't do in a free market is kill and steal and obviously defraud. And uh, everything else is, is open season, right? And so I just really, really wanted to point that out, that the systems that we're looking at that are in place at the moment are largely fascistic with fascism uh, and communism uh, comes um, a corporate toadyism or corporatism, this is always the case. As soon as the government gets control of the money supply and it gets control of the interest rates, then it can bestow massive godlike economic favors upon certain companies or, or corporations who then fawn for its favor and pay for uh, citizens to get elected who are going to favor the corporation's interests. And the corporation trails after uh, the state and its power like sharks trail after a pirate boat forcing plump people to walk off planks. And so I just hope that you understand that if you see this, and please send this around to people who are confused about this, when you're looking at all of the mess and ruin that is going on, in the economy today. Fundamentally, fundamentally, fundamentally look at two things, the money supply and interest rates. And if the government has got its nasty, deep, venomed little fangs deep into the jugular of either of these two entities, and inevitably both of them, then you are not looking at a free market and the resulting bleeding out that occurs in the economy is not the result of free choice, but rather the result of state power. Well, if nothing else, I hope we have at least established the fact that no, we are not living in a free market and that no, no one on the face of the planet is because governments do monopolize the currencies and they do control the interest rates. And with those levers of financial control, anything that happens within that system is inherently already regulated. So to blame this or that on this or that piece of deregulation underlooks the fundamental underlying chains, the control control over the economy, which is inherent in that production of money and in the control of the interest rates. So that, for example, when Federal Reserve Chairman Ellen Greenspan dropped interest rates down to 1% in the wake of the dot-com bubble bursting, and then all of that money flooded into the housing markets, which was then backed up by government regulation through Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, and then when all of that collapsed and the, uh, the public was on the hook for the hundreds of billions and then the trillions ultimately that resulted from the various bailouts and quantitative easing, easing and the hidden inflation tax, which is part of the printing of the money, well, when all of that transpired, people could blame it on the free market and the deregulation if they want, but really it's fundamentally the Federal Reserve propping up and underlying the entire system which makes that possible in the first place. And I think it's important to understand that this doesn't mean that a free market and a free system would mean that no one would ever be would ever be out of money, no one would ever be swindled again. Of course that's not the case. It would be much more a buyer beware type of system and there would be problems, but at the very least least one could say when a financial institution or any type of institution went under in a truly free market, there would be no people uh, there being forced at the point of a gun to pay taxes to bail out these uh, financial institutions. They would simply go under. And that's the way a free market would work. And you can argue, and, and there are productive arguments to be had, I'm sure, about whether free markets like that can ever really exist. And maybe the best thing we can do is to have this type of mongrel system we have and and hope for the best when it comes to regulation obviously i don't agree with that but i think there is at least some type of debate to be had there but when the people on the other side of the debate try to to limit it down and try to reduce it to a simplistic dichotomy between the status quo deregulation quote unquote that we've seen under uh, certain administrations in the past versus the regu the f even tighter regulation they want that is a false debate the debate is really between the regulations that they want versus the, the regulations that the other people People want. And meanwhile, the issue of the fundamental underlying regulation of the entire economy upon which everything rests is completely glossed over. 
So in a way, it amounts to basically complaining about the rules of a rigged roulette game without actually addressing the fact that the game itself is rigged, that the uh, the roulette's uh, wheel has actually been weighted, so it will likely land on this or that square. Now, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about the, uh, the rules of the game in that system. It, of course, that's ridiculous. Of course, we have to look at the way the roulette uh, wheel has been rigged or the way the dice have been loaded and, uh, and not concentrate on the debate about the rules that uh, result from the rigged game because obviously it's a rigged game and we have to address that fact that underlies it all and i think that's the important thing to understand that regulation and the idea of regulation and the idea that government is going to come along and save everything for you is itself a mental trap and we have tried that for centuries and centuries from the uh, the dawn of the uh, the the nation state in in so many ways the government has always had control over currencies and control over interest rates and control over markets in various ways. So one would imagine that there must be more people out there that would at least be willing to give freedom a try if they were ever able to come to a full understanding of what freedom even means in this economic context. And I hope that the uh, broader point of today's episode also is not lost, that uh, that certainly regulation in, of all different types of industries only attracts the very people that are supposed to be regulated over, and it becomes a crony system, and that is not by chance, that is not happenstance, that is not a random concatenation of events. It is designed to happen that way because people with criminal minds like to get their hands on the levers of power. So... Perhaps the solution is to take away the levers themselves. And on that provocative note, we'll leave things there for today. I'm your host, James Corbett.